O oh God, come to my assistance. O oh Lord, make haste to help me. You are my rescuer, my help. O oh Lord, do not delay me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. You're very welcome to this Mass of the 18th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their Creator and Guide, you may restore what you have created, and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, O, oh, come to the water, all who are thirsty, though you have no money, come. Buy corn without money, and eat, and at no cost, wine and milk. Why spend money on what is not bread, your wages on what fails to satisfy? Listen, listen to me, and you will have good things to eat, and rich food to enjoy. Pay attention. Come to me, listen, and your soul will live. With you I will make an everlasting covenant out of the favours promised to David. The Word of the Lord. The Lord is kind and full of compassion, slow to anger, abounding in love. How good is the Lord to all, compassionate to all his creatures, the eyes of all creatures look to you, and you give them their food in due time. You open wide your hand, grant the desires of all who live. The Lord is just in all his ways, and loving in all his deeds. He is close to all who call him, who call on him from their hearts. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Nothing can come between us and the love of Christ, even if we are troubled or worried, 
or being persecuted, or lacking food or clothes, or being threatened and even attacked. These are the trials through which we triumph by the power of him who loved us. For I am certain of this, neither death nor life, no angel, no prince, nothing that exists, nothing still to come, not any power or height or depth, nor any created thing can come between us and the love of God made visible in Christ Jesus our Lord. The Word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus received the, when Jesus received the news of John the Baptist's death, he withdrew by boat to a lonely place where they could be by themselves. But the people heard of this, and leaving the towns, they went after him on foot. So as he stepped ashore, he saw a large crowd, and he took pity on them and healed their sick. When evening came, the disciples went to him and said, This is a lonely place, and the time has slipped by. So send the people away, and they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, There is no need for them to go. Give them something to eat yourselves. But they answered, All we have with us is five loaves and two fish. Bring them here to me, he said. He gave orders that the people were to sit down on the grass. Then he took the five loaves and the two fish, raised his eyes to heaven, and said a blessing. And breaking the loaves, he handed them to his disciples, who gave them to the crowds. They all ate as much as they wanted, and they collected the scraps remaining, twelve baskets full. Those who ate numbered about 5,000 men, to say nothing of women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. The miracle of the loaves and fishes which we have just heard foreshadows the Eucharist where multitudes are indeed fed on the living bread come down from heaven, Christ's own body and blood. Being nourished on heavenly bread should help focus our minds more sharply, however, on those of our planet who are short of earthly bread. The Holy Father has said, that's Pope Francis recently, that, and I quote, Participation in the Mass should challenge us to address social inequalities in our world where people have insufficient bread for themselves and their families. He goes on, To ignore them would mean becoming like the rich man who pretended not to notice the beggar Lazarus lying at his gate. We could ask ourselves the question, is there anyone lying at our gate at present whom we tend to overlook, whether in our family, our neighbourhood, our nation, or even the wider world? However, Saint Mother Teresa often spoke about the material poverty of the poorer nations as being a less serious issue than the spiritual poverty of the richer nations. And that's us. Everyone knows that we have a spiritual hunger which cannot be satisfied by material means. Maybe COVID-19 is teaching us something in this regard. Man does not live by bread alone, we heard in the acclamation to the Gospel today. 
Jesus reminds his adversaries, his adversary of this. We would never dream, however, of denying our children ordinary food, but I think it's a bigger sin to let them without spiritual nourishment. What spiritual reserves are we bequeathing to our children and grandchildren? As well as that, Jesus tells us that we are created for a life beyond the grave. He says, Labour not for the food that perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, the kind the Son of Man is offering you. Not to see beyond the material world would be lethal, I think, spiritually. It would mean we've missed out on why we were created in the first place. An overly materialistic lifestyle would keep us more focused on things rather than people. But I think that with this COVID-19, I think we have been more focused on people than on things, which indeed is the right way around. We might even be tempted to see people as commodities to be used and not as persons made in the image and likeness of God to be loved. Seeing the image of God in the face of our fellow mortals will prepare us for face-to-face -face meeting with him and hopefully then in the world to come. In the Gospel today, it is rather interesting to know that Jesus didn't perform a miracle, the miracle of the loaves and fishes, with just a wave of his hand. He never wanted to be seen as a superman or a magician. He needed human input coming in the form of a few loaves and fishes. It's the same with us. We come to Mass with our two loaves and fishes, which can be translated into our paltry efforts at loving others. Now, in the realm of love, small acts of kindness speak a lot louder, did you know, than some grand gestures. Jesus will know our good intentions and he'll expand our capacity to love in a more unstinting way. God will not be outdone in generosity. The amount we measure out, and that includes love, the amount we measure out is the amount we will be given back according to the scriptures. The Holy Father, that's Pope Francis, he recently said, and I quote, We come to the Mass bringing our whole life, which includes the little loaves and fishes of our everyday self-giving, and we go out from the Mass imbued with the riches of love, which can only be found in Christ. Thank you all for listening. God bless you all. We place our needs before the Father, for the Church, that it will continue with confidence to proclaim eternal truths for the salvation of souls. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for peace in the world, that our desire for better standards of living may not be at the expense of justice for the poor, care for the environment, and a more sharing of the world's resources. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for 
ourselves that we will be enabled to use money and possessions wisely so as to inherit the place God has prepared for us in the world to come. Lord, in your mercy. For those whom the Lord will call to himself this day, that they may be found to be rich in God's sight, and so enter into the fullness of life with him. Lord, in your mercy. For the recently deceased, especially Margaret Brunwell, and those whose anniversaries we recall today and in the coming week, may they find happiness in the life to come. Lord, in your mercy. We ask our Lady's help as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Healing Prayer Especially those affected with COVID-19 Merciful God, come to the help of your people. Be our shelter in this time of peril and strengthen the bonds of our community. Bring healing to all who suffer the ravages of disease and assist those whose skill and art can put an end to this affliction. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from my hands with praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. 
holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Zion in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Zion in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, and he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held worthy to be in your presence and minister to Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring heart to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Radford Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. You have given us, O Lord, bread from heaven, endowed with all delights and sweetness in every taste.
Let us pray. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ.